Hey, Fight fans, thanks for joining us and welcome to The Way In, the show that spotlights the latest MMA bouts and the topics surrounding the sport. I am Dorian, Mr. MMA Hernandez, and with me as always is Nathan Tyrone. And today we're going to bring to you a topic we call The Truth About, a segment where we highlight some of the more high-impact topics that are facing the sport today. One of those high-impact topics is showmanship. More than anything in the UFC and in MMA, showmanship has been a very crucial part to bringing attention to the sport, let alone to bringing attention to a fighter. So let's talk about, more than anything, what showmanship is and its reflection on the sport. First, let's, let's talk about what a showmanship is. It's defined as this. It's the skill of performing in such a manner that will appeal to an audience or aid in conveying the performance essential theme or message. Now, just to give you an idea of what we're talking about and some of the prime examples of what showmanship is in, in sports, uh, who are the prime examples of showmen in uh, combat sports? Well, more than anything, Muhammad Ali being Singing number one. Yeah. Uh, number two, Mike Tyson. Okay, mind you, these are not in order by importance or preference. It's just to give you an example. Uh, three, Roberto Duran, mm -hmm. Sugar Ray Leonard, Prince Nassim, uh, Pernell Whitaker, Roy Jones Jr., yeah. okay, Floyd Mayweather. And more than anything, we want to talk about the, the showman in MMA. Some prime examples, Tito Ortiz, mm -hmm. Ken Shamrock, yeah. the Diaz brothers, Nick, Nick and Nate. Without a okay, doubt. Okay, Rampage Jackson. Uh, Matt Hughes, Royce Gracie, which I would like to either call the father or grandfather of MMA, let yeah, you know. Fair. Okay, Randy Couture, Anderson Silva, if we ever left him out, I'd be an idiot. Okay, Josh Koscheck, huge showman in, in this sport. And more than anything, the most popular and the most recently talked about, Conor McGregor. <laughs> okay, but more than anything, when we're talking about showmanship, Okay, we want to know what are the limits or what, what are the limits in showmanship and when does showmanship become mudsling or just bad sportsmanship? And I'm going to start this with saying this. There's a famous cliche. Don't write checks your ass can't cash. Okay, I don't know. I, I, I'm an old fogey. You know, I'm 42 years old, so a lot of people might not know their sla that slogan, but that is definitely... <laughs> You know, a cliche that's always been out there. You don't write checks your ass can't cash. In other words, you don't say something that you can't pay the consequences or stand to pay the consequences for. And more than anything in MMA, we have to realize that this is an entertainment sport. It is a sport that's trying to become mainstream, but more than anything, it is also something that has entertainment value and needs to also have that value addressed. And more than anything with these fighters, we don't see enough of this showmanship, which is why the aforementioned Conor McGregor has been brought up so lately because of the way he speaks, the way how flamboyantly he talks and carries himself. He's basically, like I said, writing those checks that his ass can't cash, but he's been cashing them. He's been cashing them since the beginning of his UFC career, all the way up until right now to having his uh, title fight in July with Jose Aldo, okay? But more than anything, when I say, you know, don't write checks that your ass can't cash, let's just look at some of the people and some of the things that have brought showmanship to combat sports. Back in the day, Mike Tyson would show up at future opponents' interviews. Yeah, okay? <laughs> right? Roberto Duran would speak. your children. <laughs> Roberto Duran would speak about your brother, your sister, or your wife. Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard would showboat in the yeah, cage. Yeah. Okay, Prince Nassim had flamboyant entrances, crazy interviews. Didn't he also wear like a, a skirt? Yeah, yeah. It, okay, and he showboated in the ring. Okay, uh, Pernell Whitaker showboated so bad that it cost him decisions. Um, Nick and Nate Dinas have done the same as Pernell Whitaker, showboated to the point that it cost them fights that they yeah, should have had sure. the W on too. Yeah. Um, Sonnen copied Duran. And, and, and let's go into the MMA form of it, okay? Uh, because he's going to be one of my number one people that I talk about on this. Um, Silva, Anderson Silva, if I mentioned before, as one of the showmen in MMA, th this guy has showboated how many times in the cage and pulled off things that we could only dream of, especially against elite and top-tier fighters, okay? But some of the, one of the most famous, uh, and definitely, definitely somebody who deserves mention, uh, Josh Koscheck. Absolutely. Okay? Right? Um, Super heel. Okay, let's put it to you this way. This man had trash talked in front of a camera, okay, that got him a 22 police officer escort to his car. 
<laughs> okay, let's not forget that when he was getting ready to face George St. Pierre and he had beaten Paul Daly in Canada, he came on and said he was going to come back and beat your hometown boy's ass and win the belt. It took 22 police officers to get him to his car. I'm surprised he still had a car, okay? <laughs> but more than anything, what, 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 the reason why we bring up showmanship is that one, I, I, one thing that I've noticed is that you know, that dumb jock scenario where uh, supposedly athletes have no mind that this is the only reason why they could do this sport or play a particular sport because they couldn't embrace or do any any other aspect or occupation in their life. That, that stereotype needs yeah. to be gone. Right. Okay, what they, a lot of people need to realize is that a, a majority of the UFC fighters are college graduates. Right. Okay, guys with degrees. Guys with doctorates. Okay, very articulate. So so when you keep throwing out this bad label of all oh, this is just about guys that couldn't hack it or cut it in the world as anything else and this is why they decided to fight you will best believe I will be the first person on that front line arguing that and fighting for to tell you why that's not true yeah I mean uh, really it, I don't think it makes much sense for anyone you, you sound ill-informed to say that a mixed martial artist is only doing this because that's what he can do that's where they can or she can do and that's where they can earn money quite to the contrary as mr mma said many of them are highly educated former champion rich franklin was in fact a math instructor um these guys do this for the love of the sport you don't get in there and bang around and and risk your body your health um for money just for the money you do it because you love the sport and those who love it tend to excel and those who don't do not last long i mean mr mma mentioned writing checks your ass can't cash. Now, I happen to think that's part of the showmanship deal. At a certain time in a prize fighter's life, they realize the extent of their abilities. They realize what they're going to do. And in the case of um, one Mr. Chael Shonen, one of the greater showmans in um, the UFC, he realized that, well, he's just going to be a middle-in fighter. And when he started letting his mouth lead the way is when he got bigger purses. It's when he as a fighter got more money. It's when he got more recognition. It's when he got those championship fights. Chell Shonen was in like three championship fights and I think a two year span. It was incredible and it was not solely due to his ability. Yes, Chell Shonen is an able fighter. He is a competent, exceptional, more than competent, excuse me. He's an exceptional grappler, but he by no means deserved those three title fights. But when the crowd wants it, when the fans want it, the UFC gives it to him. And Conor McGregor is one of those situations. Conor McGregor, you know, a fairly recent acquisition to the UFC has fought some decent competition, but nothing in the top 10 and nothing too stiff. I, I mean, is, Mr., is, is Poirier? Nothing in yeah. the top 10. And so he's getting himself a title fight. And why is that? Because he is a great showman. When he talks, people listen. Muhammad Ali for many years said that he is the greatest boxer ever. When he was in his prime, he would classify himself as the greatest. And still to this day, we call Muhammad Ali the greatest. Now, I know this is going to get some hate, but... Statistically, Muhammad Ali was not the greatest. He was one of the greatest showmen. He was a great, an incredible champion, but he was not the greatest boxer, not in his prime, and unfortunately not now. He simply talked his way into a spot that we believed in. For some reason, when it's on the camera, when it's in front of the television, when you have a mic in your hand, people are believing what you say. And showmanship is a key part of that. For fighters who are not as great as Muhammad Ali, but want to be able to uh, get a little more purse money, put a little more butts in seats at these fights, they talk it up and they talk it big and usually there's financial rewards for that type of thing. All right, and to back up my co-host, uh, Sonnen did that in two years, but actually would have done it in one if it wasn't for the, if you think about it, the anabolic steroid yeah, drama. Yeah. Okay, he would have gotten three title fights in one year to a year and a half's time. Unheard of. Okay, um, which brings up the next question. Is showmanship a requisite for combat sports? And I'm going to, I have to tell you, this is a very, very thin line because you can go both sides with this one. Um, like, like my, like my co-host said, more than anything, Sonnen did, was a great orator. The man knew how to put, how to speak. And even though he had a great high level grappling, let's be honest, he was the next best guy in line for Anderson Silva because Anderson Silva was wiping out his division. Okay. If it wasn't until, it wasn't until Chael Sonnen's, uh, four and a half minute, uh, what's the word? Domination yeah, of the I champion. Think that's fair to say. Yeah, a, a four and a half minute domination, right up until he got choked out. That really helped back up, like the, the cliche of, of yeah. the ass. You know, the writing the check that the ass can't cash. 
But let's go back to it. Is showmanship a requisite for combat sports? So what I'm going to try to present to you is some good and prime and bad examples, to my opinion. And I, I welcome any type of you know response back to this. But let's just go with this. Good examples of showmanship in the MMA community. Okay, Tito Ortiz versus Ken Shamrock. Yeah. All right, yeah. that was number two, number two fight, not the number one fight, the number two fight in 2006. Okay, Lesnar versus Mir two. Okay. Uh, Pettis versus Cerrone, right. right? Silver versus Sonnen, one and two, okay? Jones versus Cormier, and now the, the aforementioned Aldo versus McGregor come of July. Now, right. mind you, these are my, my, my examples of good ones, okay? I'm going to give you my examples of bad ones, okay? Melendez versus Masvidal, two, okay? McDonald versus Ellenberger, yeah. okay? Silva versus Sonnen, two. Jones versus Evans, Okay, and I mean John Bones Jones versus Rashad Sugar, you know Sugar Evans. Okay, Jones versus Cormier. Yeah. All right, and the aforementioned Aldo versus McGregor. Okay, now if you notice on some on this list, I mentioned some of the same fights twice. Okay, and I'm and I have to do this because more than anything, I want you guys to be informed, and more than anything, I want you to realize that is this really something that we need, or is it something that needs to be tempered? Okay, both fights that are on both lists, the Silva versus Sonnen 2, the Jones versus Cormier, and the Aldo versus McGregor. And I'm just going to give you my quick, simple points on why I think these fights were both good and bad. Okay, let's start with the most, the, the, in chronological order, the Silva versus Sonnen 2. Okay, why I thought this was a good example of showmanship. Okay, both of these opponents were already competing at the top of their game. Okay, both fighters were showmen. Okay, with the things that Anderson Silva was doing in the cage, nobody has seen since Roy Jones Jr., if you go by chronological order and Prince Nassim, all the way back to, to Muhammad Ali. Yeah, okay, and no matter what, both fighters brought positive attention to the sport. Okay, whether you didn't know about them, whether you liked them, whether you hate them, you were paying attention That's to right. them. Okay, but now let's go into the bad about this, okay? Sonnen started doing WWE-like shtick, okay? And I have to bring this up because even though this is a form of entertainment, this sport wants to go mainstream. It is a real-life sport. These people are not in the cage acting out a scenario. They are literally fighting out a scenario. Yeah. Who is going yeah. to win? Okay, and WWE shtick does not need to be presented, I, in my opinion, does not need to be in the UFC. We want to separate these two sports. We understand that no matter what, both of them are a form of entertainment. But when we look at Major League Baseball, or we look at the NBA, or we look at the NFL, we in no way, shape, or form any way and categorize them or associate them with the WWE right. or TNA. Okay, we know that one is a sports entertainment, the other one is a sport. So doing WWE like shtick in the cage doesn't help the, the, the sport separate itself and categorize itself separate from what the, what the WWE and TNA is. Okay, um, part of that Sonnen Silva 2 match, Sonnen started to speak badly of Silva's family. Okay, this is not unheard of. Like I mentioned earlier, Roberto, Roberto Duran used to speak about people's brothers, sisters, where their wives. But there has to be a level of class. There has to be a level of sportsmanship, a level of professionalism that needs to be maintained. A fighter can still speak about another fighter in a way, like if I was, if I was fighting my co-host, you know, I'm going to take him down. I'm going to dominate him. I'm going to have my way with him. It won't but happen. I don't that have to speak. <laughs> but I don't have to speak about his family. I don't have to speak about his wife. Now, I mean, don't get me wrong. Every sport, everyone knows that there's a mental as well as a physical aspect to this sport. But there also needs to be lines of sportsmanship and decorum that need to be maintained. Okay, let's go back into the into some of the bad points of this Son in Silver 2. Um, he spoke badly of the Brazilian people. Okay, this man single-handedly got him 50,000 plus death threats. Okay, <laughs> you know how hard it was for them? It, Dana White went on record as to say, I think we'll have to fly in a chopper and fly him out because he would not be able to walk back to the locker room. Okay, that 
is bad, okay? This is a type of detention that is, uh, even though it's a high emotional, high adrenaline, and more than anything, high impact, what we're talking about, it's something that the sport does not need for legitimacy, mm -hmm. okay? And it does look in bad form. This is not a sport when it, and nothing in mixed martial arts in the title says about country versus country. It is martial artists versus martial artists. So I think that definitely this was def it falls in the line of bad because it was a it was a step over the line of decorum. Yeah. Okay. Um, more than anything, because of Sonnen's comments, he even got assaulted at the press conference. Okay. When uh, 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 when they were in Brazil the week of the fight. Okay. More than anything, comments of this of this nature just bring negative attention to the sport and brings us back to the making checks that you ask can't cash. He ended up riling up a very passionate and very fired up Anderson Silva. Who? Yeah, put it on him. Okay, so let's go to our second fight, and we're gonna we're gonna make this one a little quicker. Jones versus Cormier. This has to be a famous one because that was a real rivalry, right? Okay. No, no matter what, same thing on the good side. Both opponents are competing at the top of their game. Both fighters are well spoken and articulate. Okay, both brought positive attention to the sport before their encounter at the MGM Grand, yeah. okay? But the encounter, and this is why the encounter falls on the good side, garnished way more interest into the fight, right. okay? Mm -hmm. But let's be honest, this was not orchestrated. This was two men, high adrenaline impact, that were brought to each other in basically a crucible-type situation, yeah. okay? And it blew up in their face. So let's, now let's go into the bad, because why did it blow up in their face? Well, let's see. Daniel Cormier for the past two years was was trash talking to the to the lead up into their fight at the MGM Grand. Yeah, yeah. Okay, um, a video surfaces of their off air encounter. Okay, now everybody remembers that yeah, one. Are we live? Are we still live? Okay, um, <laughs> you know, and and to me. Both fighters made, made themselves look foolish with the encounter at the MGM Grand, okay? One with Daniel Cormier coming out and saying that he's never seen anybody touch another person in a face-off. Dude, what rock have you been hiding under, <laughs> okay? I, I, I even know from boxing that I've seen people touch each other and, you know, okay? So, uh, either way. Fight goes the distance with no real ups or downs or finishes, yeah. which which was ultimately a bad a bad thing because I mean don't get me wrong we do have our bloodthirsty fans out there and we look for that and want that finish but that's what we didn't have in this fight we didn't get our finish it ended up ending in a unanimous decision for the for Jones which no matter what to me did stay a lot but it, it kind of hurt the sport more than it helped the sport. Well, whew, where to begin with that? Thank you, Mr. MMA. Um. I disagree to, on some points. I don't think that there's such a thing as bad showmanship, bad sportsmanship, yes. And I would count the Cormier-Jones uh, confrontation, the unsanctioned fight for, for all intents and purposes they had at the weigh-in. I would say that's a bad thing. That's bad sportsmanship. But in general with showmanship, I feel like as a prize fighter, if you need to do, you got to do what you got to do to ensure that you are going to be able to uh, get an adequate purse. A prize fighter's got a limited career more limited than um, the NFL. And you, when you bring up topics like the other major sports league, the NBA, the NFL, and uh, um, Major League Basketball, um, these guys get huge checks. These guys get huge signing bonuses. These are, these are mainstream sports. Some of these fighters, you know, um, the released the released pay information is like five thousand dollars a fight. Now, sure, the UFC's taking care of them, um, and they're not releasing all of the pay because the UFC is a, a private company and doesn't have to do that. But they're getting nowhere near what an unknown boxer would get simply because of the sports popularity and notoriety. So I feel like it's on the prize fighter. They've got to get their voice out there, and this works every time. It's worked for Chael Shonen. It's worked for Conor McGregor. And it'll work for uh, whomever chooses to rattle the cage loudest. It's worked for Josh Koscheck. Josh Koscheck is probably the biggest heel, the biggest known heel, if you want to call him that, in uh, MMA. Um, and, and people love him for it. I love him for it because lo if you, whether you love or hate his, his, his showmanship, the guy knew how to fight. He knows how to finish a fight. He knew how to finish a fight. And um, ultimately, it was better for the sport, better exposure. When you get these little sound bites on the, on the internet and on your, on your news channel, 
um, people pay attention. And so I don't so much think showmanship can, uh, whether it be asinine or straightforward or what have you, can be a really negative thing for the sport as it does give you a lot, of, give the sport a lot of exposure. Though I do think that poor showmanship uh, or showmanship rather can can move into poor sportsmanship, and that's when you really gotta uh, slow your train down. That's when it really affects the sport. Um, and you don't get a lot of poor sportsmanship in the MMA. Anyway, guys, we are running over time today. I want to thank you very much for joining us on this episode of The Way In. Why don't you click subscribe for us down there, and in the comments section, why don't you weigh in on your own opinion? What do you think about this whole showmanship thing? We, we're anxious to hear. And thank you for joining us on The Way In. We'll see you next time.